The business intelligence industry is flooded with analysts who are constantly coming up with new buzzwords and terms, which can be confusing if you're new to the scene. Terms like augmented analytics, automated data wrangling, self-service BI, cognitive computing, and more have popped up into the vocabulary in the last few years, with each new analyst bringing new buzzwords every year. I once joked that if we were in the lawn care industry, you'd end up with some crazy set of terms like these, which really just scare people rather than offer any actual value. As you can probably tell, I'm not a huge fan of these buzzwords, which they typically end up being important sounding technical words aimed at impressing or intimidating people who aren't in the know. That being said, there is one term that's generated a lot of questions in the context of business intelligence and tools, and that's big data. Let's dig into big data and how it applies to business intelligence tools. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. When people talk about big data, it's usually broken down into four V words, which you should consider, and I propose there's probably five of them. The first is veracity, which generally, from a data perspective, means the accuracy of your data. Is your data truthful? Do you have biases, noise, completeness, etc.? Now, I'm sure it comes as a surprise to nobody that data quality is a problem for everybody, regardless of the size of your data sets. But large data actually compounds this problem. In Dundas BI, you can run your data through the data cube layer, which allows for processes like duplicate removals, merging, fuzzy grouping, sampling, and more. These will help with data problems. Data tools in Dundas BI give you the ability to correct data, but it really comes down to how many bad things you've got. If you have issues that are a small percentage of your data and it just needs to be polished before it can be used, great, you can correct these on the fly. If you have something like a 90% corruption rate, you probably wanna be solving this on the data source itself and doing some initial warehousing before you bring in a BI tool. It really depends. The next V is volume. So how much data are you processing? When it comes to BI, big or small, you're typically clumping your data into bite-sized pieces. There's nothing more useless than a dashboard with a giant table on it that took five minutes to load and is displaying 500,000 records. Nobody's gonna gain any insights from this. Good dashboards need to present information in bite-sized fashions so that people can see what the heck is going on. When it comes to big data, the dashboard should kind of look the same regardless of it being a large data source or a smaller data source. It's all about that summary information. Where the problem of volume really comes into play is the loading time of the dashboard because a lot of number crunching might have to occur first. Think of it as doing math. If I were to give you three values to add up, you could probably do it pretty quickly. But if I told you you need to add up three million values manually, we're gonna be here for a while. So there's two ways to solve this problem. You can get a faster database and do that number crunching quickly, or you let your BI tool help. Dundas BI can help solve this problem by pre-caching these values. So we crunch these values in advance on a timer, and the values are stored in a warehouse. That way, anyone needing visualizations can simply be given the answer that they want without having to wait for all that work. The next fee, variety. Variety of data sources. Similar to veracity, big data users and small data users, patent pending on that buzzword, can all have multiple data sources. Multiple data sources can add complexity, and you need to bring them together before you can use them in your BI tool. The problem is that a lot of BI tools on the market today don't actually solve this problem. But Dundas BI does have an ETL tool, so you can go in first, join your data together, and model it and have it prepared so that you can use it directly on the dashboard. If your BI tool isn't allowing for this, then you have to go do all of that outside of the tool before you can bring a BI tool in. Now on to velocity. This is very much a requirement for good dashboards, as companies want to be as close to real time as possible for their data that they're tracking. That way they can make up-to-date decisions. Anybody with data has this problem as real time is important not just to big data world, but anyone. As you can probably surmise, velocity 
is often hindered by the earlier V of volume. For a BI tool to allow real-time data, you need to have a data source that's fast enough to quickly return results to meet the expectations of your users. If you want one second updates on your dashboards or your reports, no problem, but your data source needs to have sub-second querying to be able to give me those data that I need. Now, how does a BI tool help with this? They don't. Warehousing and in-memory are mutually exclusive to real time, since you can't be storing data in your BI tool, pre-crunching these values, and still expect by the minute real time. The only way that a BI tool helps with this aspect is their ability to actually support real time. Many BI tools force warehousing on you and simply can't be used because you have to go through a warehousing layer. In Dundas BI, you have a choice, direct querying or warehousing. So real time is possible, assuming your data source is gonna support it. The last view that I'm adding for your consideration is visualization. You should consider how well suited your tool is to visualize larger data sets. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't make sense to try to visualize your entire big data data source in a dashboard, but sometimes you might fancy larger results. If you have this need, be sure to check that your BI tool can manage larger data sources as it visualizes them. As an example, in Dundas BI, charts, tables, reports, scorecards, etc., often will support larger data sets using something called virtualization. Hmm, another V. Virtualization is the automatic support for things like zooming and windowing, so that not all the results are being displayed and downloaded at the same time. From a performance perspective, you want your dashboard to lazy load this so that only the data that's in that window is gonna be downloaded rather than the entire data set. Small things like this can make a big difference to the user experience. So that's big data, the buzzword from the perspective of business intelligence. Hopefully this clears up where the lines are drawn and considerations that you should have. Like buzzwords? Check out the video that we did called self-service on a silver platter as self-service is certainly one of those concepts that's worth understanding. Thanks for watching.